Yeah, hi, here's Arne from Königsmark. Um, this time I got a lot of requests uh, regarding the setup mode, how to basically rig any kind of character that doesn't come with an included rig already. So I decided to do this uh, little video to give you an idea how that would work. As you can see, I have a character here that has absolutely no joints, no weights, no deformation applied to it. So it's basically just a mesh of a character. It doesn't matter if uh, your character is made from separate meshes or just one mesh as in this case. So it works with both. Basically, you start by getting the people motion controller. There, within the um, basic settings, you already see that the preset rig type is set to create a new rig. So that's what we want to use to create our own rig. You can see that uh, we get some kind of handles already here, uh, which are most of the time just uh, available on one side. The other side is behaving symmetrically. That's because of this mode we have here on top to set up the joints with symmetry. If for any reason you have a character that has no perfect symmetry, you just use the setup mode, which gives you additional handles on the other side as well. But in this case, setup with symmetry is perfectly fine. So what to do now is to um, switch to maybe front view first and uh, trying to correct the positioning of the handles so that they are in line with the shape of the character. So basically you just use the move tool with the model mode and um, try to bring in the handles to a more matching position in regards of the mesh you have. So I'm switching over to the side view here. Maybe the ankle is a little bit higher. Um, the knee should be inside the mesh as the um, main handles will become joints later on. So of course you would like to have the joints inside of the mesh. Um, regarding the spine, um, there's no need to create an S curve or something like that. So basically between the hip and the chest area, it's perfectly fine to have almost a straight line here in between. So that's fine as well. This is the neck, this is the head joint, having a look from top down. You can see that uh, I shouldn't get this. There we have it. This is the elbow. Again, same as with the knee, it makes sense to place this uh, inside of the mesh, not uh, on the tip of the elbow joint. Yeah, so basically it's um, just moving around those handles. This is uh, would be the attachment point for the uh, upper leg joint. But this looks already fine enough for me. Hand orientation, can adjust this a little bit. Basically, looks fine to me. So next step would be to load this new rig, basically. This creates a group of joints and links them to the dialog already. So basically, uh, we now have a rig already and can start to constrain this if we don't want to change anything. As you can see, this um, default rig doesn't include any individual fingers. So if you like to have finger bones 
apply them by yourself just by adding joints to the rig and just group them below the um, hand spline. As you can see, it just can unfold this hierarchy. So you can find the left hand here and there you can just uh, group the finger joints you like to use. So they are not included in this uh, default rig. So now we have a rig. Um, we have to bind this to the character so that actually the movement of the joints will uh, also move the mesh. So to have this, we um, just do a right click on the topmost joint, which is the hip joint by default. And we choose to select children so that all of the joints are selected now. Next is to hold the control key and select all the meshes you like to bind to the joints. So in this case it's just one character mesh, so it's just one control click so that all the joints and all the meshes are selected at once. Keep the control key pressed, that's important, while you head over to character menu, commands and bind. This will bind or connect the joints with the mesh. So as you can see, this creates a weight tag and uh, applies already a skin deformer to the mesh. So in the weight tag, you can see that all of our joints are listed here and that the um, binding post is saved automatically. So we can always come back to this uh, T-pose later on. Next, you can do a double click on the weight tag and this will start the weight tool. And the weight tool uh, has some tabs here and in the join tab you can select the character. And this will bring up this colorful uh, representation of the character showing you the influence area of each joint colored in different uh, colors. And uh, basically you have to look for areas uh, which have um, the wrong coloring basically. So for instance if the upper arm joint also have some weights here on the side of the chest area that's something we normally wouldn't want because uh, moving the arm shouldn't deform the chest area. Or if you have some weights from the right leg also on the red on the left leg that's also something uh, we would have to fix. So how to fix this? Basically makes sense to switch to point mode so that we can actually see the um, points on our mesh and then we just select individual joints we like to work with. So as already mentioned there are some typical problem areas which are normally the shoulder, upper arm area and the leg and hip area. So maybe we start with the left arm which is the left shoulder. And you can see by selecting an individual joint here in the list we just get uh, the um, weights painted into our viewports that uh, are attached to this joint. And you can see that we have some areas here at the side of the chest that are also influenced by the upper arm joint. So before we start to paint now, um, it's important to just hover your mouse over the area which we would like to work with. And you can see that this area is basically influenced by more than just one joint. You can see that we have the left collar and we have the left shoulder. And if I move the mouse a little bit, you can see that uh, there might be some areas over here, for instance, where the chest and the left collar have both some influence. So in all cases it's important that um, at least if you like to erase weights that um, the points where you like to erase the weights have at least two joints uh, in the list here. So when we start to erase weights from the left shoulder they will automatic automatically be shifted 
to the left collar or to the chest so that no point will have uh, just 0% weight in the end. So every point has to have exactly 100% uh, in the end. So while animating that the point will not lag behind the body movement. So to fix this, we just head over to the options tab of the weight tool. And we have some different modes here. And for us, the most um, useful modes would be erase to get rid of weights that are in the wrong places. And the absolute mode, which um, just applies the strengths or the weight that you can see here in the strengths uh, slider. Um, so in our case, we use erase with the uh, visible only area. So just the area that is directly under the mouse cursor. And this auto normalize just reapplies or shifts the weights to the other joints that have influence in this area. So that's exactly what we're looking for. So if I delete the weights from the left shoulder in this case, they will fall back to the left color or the chest joints. So in the end that all of these joints will have still 100% weight, just with the different joints than before. So basically you just erase the weights in those areas where you don't want these joints to affect the deformation. Heading back to the joints list, we can just move down the list. This would be in the next one, forearm. This looks okay already. So it's basically um, the problematic area is here, the side of the chest. So same problem here on the other side. You can see we have at least two joints affecting this area. So it's, we are safe to erase the weights from here. Same here with the lower arm area. Just erasing the unwanted weights and then we are done. Having a look at the legs, also typical problem area. You can see that in this case, the left upper leg also has some influence on the right side. So important to get rid of this as well. Okay, maybe it's even a little bit too low here, so erasing also some of the weights that are already in the calf area or lower leg area. Same with the knee joint here. Basically, you just walk down the character from here and try to correct the weights. That's okay for a quick demonstration. Right side, you can see that's the same problem here. Also some weights on the wrong body side getting rid of this. So in this case, I erase the weight from um, the joint by accident. So I'm heading over to absolute mode 100% and just paint 100% on this point again. So that it's uh, moved by the right leg joint here. So I'm fine with this, basically. So um, after you've done the checking, or maybe the head area is also some typical stuff. So I'm just checking this as well. You can see that the neck um, is bleeding out to the chin area here as well. So maybe get rid of this as well, so that the or even chest area has some influence here. So we should really get rid of this. So if you have um, problems areas, problem areas like this one, you can also 
just use the um, absolute mode, in this case with the head joint, and just repaint those areas where absolutely where you absolutely clear that this should only be affected by the head joint, for instance. And if there are some points hidden in the mouse area, just untick visible only and paint over these lips, for instance, or eye sockets or something like this, nostrils. So you can be sure that um, all of the head points are only affected by the head joint. So we here we have some problem area as well. So in this case, I'm using maybe 100% absolute visible only and uh, repaint this area. You can see that the inner part of the mouse also moves with the neck, but that should be okay as the character doesn't have to open the mouse. So it should be safe to do this. Head, neck, chest. You can see that there are some points maybe. So if we have a chest value of 30% with this point, maybe this one should have about 30 as well. Or we um, think over the uh, weights of the neck joint maybe to just apply 100% here for the neck area. Sometimes you really have to try this by um, moving the joints around. We can do this in a minute and see how the deformation works. As you can always come back to this weight tool. You just double click on this weight tag and then just um, reapply the weights or you can even use a smooth mode to blend weights between neighboring joints for instance for softer deformation transitions. So in this case I'm fine. You just uh, click to the side of the weight tag to unselect this. We select the people motion controller. Um, we already um, clicked on the constraints, so the um, current positioning and orientation of the joints is already saved. So it's um, we are good to switch to animate mode. You can see that uh, this brings normally, or this is typical, some problems to the shoulder area that um, are fixed in our static poses and offsets. So we have some shoulder offset here, so you can bring them up and bring them a little bit to the front. Maybe like this. Maybe even a little bit to the outside. Same would be with the elbows that are a little bit um, too much oriented to the hips, so you can push them outwards. And same with the wrists or hands orientation also uh, can be changed here. So just take the time to um, bring the character to the default pose. Maybe the elbows are a little bit too far out. Maybe the shoulders should be a little bit to the back. Yeah, something like this. So, heading to the motion designer, walk in place and just play around a little bit with the settings to have a look if uh, everything works fine. So that's basically uh, the workflow of applying uh, a rig to a character that has no joints 
in it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, most of the time you will have to work with the weights to get really the transitions and um, the um, areas influenced by the joints you like to have. So in this case, maybe the chest should also be uh, pushed a little bit to the front. So it's all in the uh, static tab here, basically. There's also some maybe orientation issue here. So whenever you switch to the uh, point mode, it might be that you see the character in the default T-pose again. So in this case, you head over to the options, configure, and you can see that there within the display settings, there is something called deformed editing. So whenever you switch this on, you can see that now the character is in the default mode. And you can see that um, the problem with the upper arm is basically because of some uh, weights that um, have a little bit of a harsh transition between maybe the chest and the upper arm. So um, maybe a good situation to show the um, smoothing mode. So just double clicking on the weight tag, heading over to the shoulder. You can see that uh, we now get this coloring going on here. And uh, there might be a little bit too hard weight transition here. So heading over to options, smooth, and maybe start with something small with a strength of five, maybe. Be uh, sure to just uh, paint on the visible points and have auto normalized on. And then you can see by clicking on this area that this will smooth out um, the weights in this area. If I untick visible only, we can also smooth the area that are more inside. In the armpit a little bit, maybe. Yeah, you can see that this is definitely a problem here with the weight and also maybe with the rotation. So smoothing out the weights helps a bit, but we can also try to work with uh, the static poses. Again, having a look at the elbow orientation, for instance. which is uh, rotating the upper arm, basically. So rotating this a little bit to one side and then bringing the elbows a little bit closer to the body. So this is just fine tuning. But you, as you can see, this uh, solves all the deformation problems we had in this shoulder area, which is almost uh, always a problematic area for the weights. So always makes sense to spend some time on this part. But in the end, it's worse because now you have uh, a working rig. You can work with IK constraints or the built-in motions and um, basically now have a character with just a uh, little effort that you can uh, animate with people in motion. So hopefully you think that has been a useful quick tip for you, how to apply the uh, built-in rigging system of people in motion to any character. And uh, yeah, just continue to let me know if you have any questions or feature requests. 
I try to implement them into future updates. So until then, have a good time and thanks for watching. See you. Bye-bye.